A variety of depaint effects and manipulations can be performed on text to create new looks. Our first example will be to show how to combine two color fonts which normally use different color palettes on the same ham screen. We'll use bevel first and choose that font's palette. We'll simply type font 1 for this example. We'll now load a second font, such as granite. This uses a completely different font. When we use the second font's palette, our first font changes to the wrong color, but a simple remap will correct that. As you can see, we can use two color fonts on the same screen. Our next demonstrations will show how to manipulate existing fonts to create new looks. We'll use a first font called engraved. We'll simply type the word text for this example. To give our word a three-dimensional look, we'll pick it up as a brush. Then choose line from the toolbox. By dragging it out just a short distance, it gives our brush an extruded look. You can also give text a facelift by giving it a new color. We'll begin by bringing up the range requester and setting up a range from red to green to blue. We'll bring up the rectangle fill types and choose line. Turn process tint on and drag the rectangle over the entire word text. We'll set the direction and when we let go Deluxe Paint begins recoloring our word for us. This creates a nice colorizing effect. A moment ago we showed you one way to create a three-dimensional look. Now we'll show you another. We pick the word text up as a brush and using perspective, tilt it to give it an odd angle. We'll stamp it down and bring up the move requester. We choose come to, set the distance to be negative 20, and set our count to match. And we'll want the move to occur on the brush axes. We can preview this to see how the brush will move. When we draw it, Deluxe Paint begins stamping the brushes in the distance, bringing them forward. This gives our word a real three-dimensional look. Now let's show how to create an embossed effect. We bring up the color palette and set up three shades of blue. Using the in-between blue, we'll make a large rectangle. We'll choose a simple Helvetica font and a large point size. For our example, we'll use the word embossed. We then pick up our word as a brush and choose the lighter of the three blues. Choose color from the mode menu and stamp the brush down. Using the darker blue, Stamp the brush down again, diagonally, two pixels off from where the first one was stamped. And finally, use the medium shade of blue to stamp between the dark and light colors. The word embossed appears to be pressed into the page. By reversing the light and dark colors, you can give a raised effect as well. To create a nice wallpaper pattern, simply pick these up as a brush and choose from brush from the fill types. Clear the screen, turn off the title bar and menu, and fill. This completes our second example. You have probably seen this animation before. We will show you one way it could be created. As you will see, color cycling can be a very effective way to animate. We'll begin by bringing up the palette requester. 
We'll first need a range of reds, so we'll copy the first some distance away and spread between them. We'll also need whites and do the same effect. We'll now bring up the range requester and set up the reds and whites along the bar. We'll bring up the rate for cycling and show. We don't want any dithering so we'll choose random and slide dither to off. You can now see how the reds and whites will cycle. Next turn on grid and bring up the fill types requester. Choose left to right and OK. Drag out a rectangle that's twice as wide as it is tall. With grid still on, pick the red and white squares up as a brush and stamp them next to each other. Pick up this row and stamp them offset by one square, giving a red and white checkerboard pattern. When we turn on color cycling, the red and white squares appear to move. Using the brush tool, we'll pick up a group of these squares. We can now clear the screen. We'll bring up the fill type requester and choose solid. So our circle will not be distorted, we'll choose B square from the prefs menu and then make our circle. We'll once again bring up fill types and choose wrap. When we fill our circle, we see the checkerboard pattern wrapped onto it. When we color cycle, it appears to spin. We can now pick up our ball as a brush. We'll clear the screen and we'll also turn grid off. From the enum menu, we'll choose frames set number and set our frame count to 50. We stamp our brush at the bottom of the screen and bring up the move requester. Count is set to 50, we'll set ease in to 50 and the Y distance to 100. We can now preview our movement. Since the move looked OK, we'll choose Draw. D-Paint will now stamp our brush on every page, gradually bouncing up the screen. By using the brush tool and holding down the Alt key, we pick up the entire area that the brush bounced within as an anim brush. We'll choose all 50 frames. D-Paint steps through each frame, picking it up for us as a brush. Next, from the Anim menu, we'll choose Anim Brush Settings and choose Ping Pong. We'll note that the duration is now 98. We'll set our frame count also to 98. We'll choose Clear and select All Frames. All 98 pages are now clear to animate on. We choose Handle Corner using Alt X, bring up the Spacing Requester, and set End Total to 98. Bring up Anim Brush Settings again and set our current to be at a midway point at 48. Position the Anim Brush on the left hand edge of the screen and drag it to the right. We see the path that it will bounce on. When we let go, Deluxe Paint stamps our Anim Brush on every page. When it's finished, turn on Color Cycling and press the 6 key to watch the animation bounce back and forth.